before we can start coding, we need to create the required file structure for the mod. A mod requires a few things more than just the code. Let's take a look at a basic mod and cover what we have. The mod resides in a directory that usually has the same name as the mod. There are times when this might not be the case, but you should always name the folder the same as your mod name. There can be a slew of different subfolders, and we'll cover those more in the future when we get to actually needing them. In this lesson, we'll just need the textures folder. As you probably already figured out, this is where we'll place the textures that our mod will be using. Looking at the files, we have the depends.txt file. This file lists the mods that our mod requires to run. If the mod name has a question mark behind it, it's optional, meaning that the mod will run without it, but will have more or different features if that mod is enabled. The description.txt file just has a short description of what the mod is or does. This is visible in game on the mods tab. Init Lua contains the code for the mod. The code can be broken down into multiple files, and we'll cover that in detail when we get further along with modding. License.txt contains the license for your code and media. If you aren't planning on releasing the mod publicly, you could skip this. If you ever plan on releasing the mod, you'll need to select a license. I cover licensing some in the appendix, and list resources for further information. Mod.conf currently only has one line, name equals mod name. In the future, this will likely be expanded to take over some of the previous files we looked at. Readme.md. This file is similar to the description, but can contain more information and instructions on how to enable or disable specific parts of the mod if applicable, or how to use the API if the mod creates one. Lastly, we have a screenshot PNG. If the mod adds blocks or items, you can take a picture of them in game. This picture should be in a 3 by 2 aspect ratio recommended 300 by 200 pixels. This is also visible in the mod tab. Let's get to making a mod. Find your mod directory and create a new folder. We'll be calling our first mod mod underscore one. It should be noted that only characters lowercase a through z, zero through nine, and underscore are allowed in the mod's name. If you try using anything else such as a dash or capital letters, you'll get an error when you try to load the mod. We could create an init Lua file directly by right-clicking and creating a new file, but that might not be an option on all operating systems. So what we'll do instead is open our code editor and add a project folder. We'll select our mod folder and click OK. Then right-click in the side panel and new file, which we will call init.lua. Now, if you're not using Atom, just open your code editor and save a file init.lua in the mod directory. Doing this ensures that we get a file that ends up with the Lua extension, rather than ending up with something like init.lua.txt. All right, so we have things ready. Let's start with some code. To create a node, we start with mindtest.register underscore node. Everything that follows this is information about the node. Add an opening parenthesis and then double quotes. Then type the mod name followed by a colon and the node name. We'll then move over one space, hit a comma, add an opening squiggly brace, and hit enter to start the second line. We're going to add a description to the node. And to do that, we'll just type description equals, quote, our very first node ever exclamation point. We already have the end quote, comma, and enter to go to the next line. We need to define a texture, and we'll do that with tiles equals squiggly brace, quotes, and then our texture name, which in this case is mod underscore one underscore first dot png. End the line with a comma, and hit return to go to the next line. We'll add a group right away so we can dig the node. We'll do that with groups equals squiggly brace oddly underscore breakable underscore by underscore hand equals two and a comma. To close out the node registration, we just need the squiggly brace and parentheses, which are already included as they were created when we put in the opening parenthesis and opening squiggly brace. The final code should look like this. Mindtest.register underscore node. 
parentheses, quotes, mod underscore one, colon, first, quotes, comma, space, squiggly brace, new line, description equals, quotes, our very first note ever, quotes, comma, new line, tiles equals, squiggly brace, quotes, mod underscore one, underscore first dot PNG, quotes, squiggly brace, comma, new line, groups equals, squiggly brace, oddly underscore breakable underscore by underscore hand equals two squiggly brace comma and then closes out with a closing squiggly brace and parentheses notice how every line with the exception of the first and the last end with a comma this is very important forget one of those commas and your mod won't load it should be noted that you could technically put all these lines together in one long line but uh that's much less readable, so I don't suggest doing that. We will be covering everything here and more in much greater detail in future lessons as there's much more we can add to a node registration. Before we launch my test and load up the mod, we need that texture. You can use the supplied texture from the resource pack or create your own. Just be sure to call it mod underscore one underscore first dot PNG. Create a new folder in your mod directory and call it textures and then copy and paste the texture in there file names for textures can have underscores and dashes but not spaces file type is usually png but other formats will work too most everything i've ever seen has been png however png is a lossless image format so you can edit it as many times as you like while keeping edges sharp if you use a lossy format, you'll lose detail on every edit and get muddy textures. While not required, it is a good idea to prefix all of your resource files with your mod's name. This ensures that you never get two mods using different textures that have the same name, which will lead to unwanted results. Launch my test, create a new world, and enable our mod. Make sure that creative mode is checked and launch the world. Open inventory with I and a search for our node. You can use any word from the description, the node name, or even the mod name to find the node. Right now, the only way to get this node is via creative inventory or using the give me command. Because we are in creative mode, we can break any node by hand. However, if we were to leave creative mode, we would find that this node could be broken by hand. If we removed the group, however, we would have an invincible node. We want to be able to craft the node, so let's find some material that could be used for the recipe. Let's just say a dirt node. And we can find the name of the node by looking at the debug info in the upper left corner of the screen. Now, if you don't see this, hit F5 to toggle it on and off. When we point to any node, the node name and texture will be listed at the end of the second line. We can see that the node name for the dirt cube is default colon dirt. This lets us know that dirt comes from the mod default. Go ahead and exit mine test. To craft an item, we need to create a recipe. And because this recipe is going to use an item from the default mod, we need to add that to our depends.txt file. We haven't actually created that file yet. So let's do so now. Create a file called depends.txt and add the word default. Save the file. That's all there is. This lets the engine know that to use our mod, the default mod must be loaded. If somehow you were to try to use this mod and had the mod default turned off, this mod wouldn't load. While we're at it, let's go ahead and create the mod.conf file. In here, we'll put the line name equals mod underscore one and save file. This will let us use the mod even if the directory name isn't mod underscore one. To create a craft recipe, we'll go back to the init Lua file and add some code after the node registration. We'll start by typing mindtest.register underscore craft parentheses curly brace. This lets the engine know that the following code is a craft recipe. Hit enter and type 
output equals quotes mod underscore one colon first. This is what the result or output of the craft recipe is. Then we have the recipe, which is a table. For our first recipe, we'll do something simple. So we'll just type recipe equals curly brace, curly brace, quotes, default colon dirt, put a comma in between the items, space, and then default colon dirt. We have it closed out with two curly braces. And on the next line, we have the curly brace and the parentheses. So this is what your final code should look like. Mind test register craft output mod underscore first recipe default dirt and a default dirt. Just like node registrations, there's a lot of things we can change with recipes and we'll look at them more in a future lesson. Let's launch mind test and load our world again to make sure the recipe is working. You should be able to put two pieces of dirt side by side at any point in the crafting grid and get the output of our node. Let's create a second node. It'll be similar to the first in its features. Start by typing mindtest.register underscore node, enter to autocomplete out, parentheses, quotes, mod underscore one, colon, uh, we're gonna call this fake diamond, comma, space, curly brace, enter, description equals, I can't believe this isn't diamond lock. Yeah, put a comma there, new line, tiles equals curly brace quotes, default underscore diamond underscore block dot PNG, comma, new line, groups equals oddly breakable by hand equals two comma and we have the closing curly brace and parentheses because we've added default to our dependencies we can use any of the textures from that mod finding the names of the textures can be done in game with debug info or you can browse to the game's install location and locate the files that way let's go ahead and create a craft recipe right away so we'll start by typing mindtest.register craft parentheses, curly brace, enter, output equals, quotes, mod underscore one, colon, fake diamond space 99, comma, recipe, equals curly brace, enter, because we're going to be stacking items on top of each other, not side by side. We'll do another curly brace, quotes, mod underscore one colon first put a comma at the end of that line and we're just going to repeat that again so we'll do mod underscore one colon first we actually don't need a comma here because it's the last line in the recipe we have our closing curly brace for the recipe and then we have the closing curly brace and parenthesis for the registration the number after the output node is the number of items the recipe will yield. This recipe requires for our items to be stacked one on top of each other in the crafting grid rather than side by side, like our previous example. If we launch our world again and open inventory, we'll see we can create 99 diamond blocks out of two of our first node blocks. Any recipe that needs diamond blocks will not accept these, however, because we've only used that texture. For example, a true diamond block can be turned into nine diamonds, whereas our fake diamond block won't make any diamonds. To wrap things up, we just need a few more files. A readme, a screenshot, license information, and a description. So for the description, just made something simple. This is a description of our very first mod created with Nathan's course. Uh, made a readme, this mod was created following Nathan's course, which can be found at HTTP, you get, you get the point. And uh, then some license information. I just released everything under public domain because eh, why not? And then a screenshot. For this, I just 
went into mine test, put a couple nodes out, F12 to take a screenshot, edited the resulting screenshot, cropped it, and resized it down to a 300 by 200 pixel image. And then this is what the mod looks like in the mod tab on the mind test page. So you can see the screenshot, the dependencies, and the short description for the mod. You should now know how to make a basic node and recipe. So let's put what you've learned to the test. The challenge for this lesson is to create two more nodes with recipes. Feel free to use textures from default or create your own. This is really open-ended. Make the recipes with whatever you want. As long as your new nodes can be created with your recipes, you've passed. See the handout for some helpful tips and a challenge reminder. Thanks for watching this lesson. I trust you learned something you can use to make your very own mods. If you enjoyed what you saw and learned something, consider subscribing and making a donation. You'll find all the resources for this lesson on my website, linked in the description below.